Hello Get to the Infants, it's Reverend Sarah and I'm going to do another assembly for you this week. And we started off a couple of weeks ago thinking about children in the Bible and we thought about David and we thought about David and that giant, that really tall man and what happened there when David used those skills that he had. So we're going to think about another child this week and we're going to think about Samuel. And like all children and all adults and all people in the Bible, Samuel was a very special baby. And his mother Hannah had said that when he was born, that when he was old enough, she would give him to God to go and work in the temple. Now you've got to remember we're thinking thousands of years ago, more fingers and toes that you've got to count on. We're thinking lots and lots of years ago. So when Samuel was old enough, he went off to live in the temple. Now we've probably talked about temples before, but the temple then was a little bit like our churches now, but it was much, much bigger. It had lots of different areas, a bit like your school. And people lived and worked there. There were priests that worked there. Like I work at the church, but I also work in the community. There were people that worked in the temple at that time. And so when Samuel was old enough, his mother took him to the temple to serve God in that place. Now Christians can serve God from wherever they work. They can work as teachers, as nurses, as doctors. They can work in an office. They can work doing building, all sorts of things. But Hannah had said to God that she would give Samuel, her baby, to him to take care of in the temple, for him to work there and learn how things worked. And so Samuel was under the care of somebody called Eli. He was a very wise man. He knew lots and lots of things and he cared for Samuel and helped him to grow. Now this story takes place at night because Samuel and Eli slept in the temple. Would you fancy sleeping in St Peter's Church for a night? Gets very cold in there. Not sure I would want to be in there for a night and there's well, lots and lots of other people in there and it was lots of fun. But that's what they did. They slept in the temple overnight. And so Samuel went to bed and Eli went to bed. Now what kind of things do you do? What kind of things are your nighttime routine? Maybe you have a bath. Perhaps you put on oh, your favourite dressing gown. Mine is very comfortable and very snuggly. So maybe you put on your pyjamas, maybe you put on your nightdress and maybe you come downstairs, perhaps you have a story, maybe you have something to eat or to drink. Maybe you have some great fluffy slippers like I do and you put on your great fluffy slippers to go up to bed, I don't know. Maybe you have something special that you sleep with, something that you cuddle like that. Maybe you don't, you, you don't really like it when it's light, and so you wear a mask. Oh my goodness, it's not working very well, is it? There you go. Do you like my mask? There you go. And it stops all the light getting in. So maybe you put a mask on, or maybe one of your, maybe your, one of your parents or carers does that. I'm going to have to take this off because I can't see a thing under there. I'm also going to have to take the dressing gown off because it's very warm today. There are lots of different things that you do to get ready for bed and then at that point maybe you go and you go oh you find a lovely comfortable bed have you got a nice blanket as well so you get yourself into bed oh get onto your blanket you've got your lovely pillow there and off you go to sleep well Samuel had gone to bed and he was going to sleep and suddenly he heard somebody's voice and the voice was calling his name. The voice was saying, Samuel, Samuel. What would you think if you woke up in the night and heard someone calling your name? Well, Samuel thought it must be Eli who was calling me. So Samuel put down his cuddly toy. He got off his lovely pillow. Oh, he took his unicorn mask off, got out from under the covers, put his slippers on, put his dressing gown on and off he went. He went off to see Eli. Now Eli was asleep and Samuel said, but you called me. And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed, Samuel. 
Oh my goodness, we had to go through it all again. So dressing gown off, slippers off, put his mask back on again, picked up his cuddly toy, got under the blankets, and off he went to sleep again. And then what do you think happened? He heard the voice again calling Samuel, Samuel. So up Samuel got again and he went off to see Eli. And Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to bed, Samuel. So here we go again. Back to bed, slippers off, dressing gown off, mask on, cuddly toy, under the blankets, and into the bed. What do you think happened this time? Yep, Samuel heard the voice again saying, Samuel, Samuel. So, same thing again, dressing gown back on, oh, fluffy slippers back on, put his cuddly toy down, took his mask off, and off he went, back to see Eli. But Eli realised at this point that something was happening and something really important and special was happening. Eli realised that that voice is coming from someone very special. And if you can think who it might be. And Eli said to Samuel, go back to bed. If you hear that voice again, then respond, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Bit of a strange thing to be saying to someone in the middle of the night, isn't it? But off he went to bed again. Slippers off. Dressing gown off. Mask back on. Cuddly toy, under the blankets, pillow. Now you've got to remember that this took place lots and lots of years ago, so they probably didn't have slippers and things like that, but we're just going to make it fun for today. So Samuel went back to sleep. He's got his cuddly toy there. Oh, oh dear, I thought I'd lost my mask and that wouldn't have been good, would it? Mask on. And Samuel hears that voice again. And the voice says, Samuel, Samuel. Now, if someone wake me up in the night, I have to admit I wouldn't be too happy. I get a bit grumpy if I don't get much sleep. But Samuel woke up and he knew and he remembered in his head what he'd been told, what Eli had told him to do. And so he said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So where do we think that voice was coming from in this story? It's a story from the Bible. It's a Christian story. I think the voice might have been coming from God. And you know, God had really special plans for Samuel. Samuel grew up being someone who was very wise. They were someone who people went to for advice. They, he was somebody that would counsel others, so give them advice and help them out. And Samuel would listen for and speak the word of God in that time. It was also Samuel who chose David to be the king when God sent him to see all these strong boys and they were strong and they looked like they could be a king. But the one that Samuel chose was the one that God told him to choose. He was David. And so we know that Samuel and David lived round about the same time. And God had special plan to Samuel and he told him this in what we call a vision he gave Samuel a picture of things that would happen and sometimes you might have a vision you might have a vision of maybe how the world could look different maybe thinking about caring for our earth perhaps thinking about looking after each other perhaps we can think how things would be better if we did things in a different way and God passed a message to three Samuel to tell people how he wanted them to live in a different way so Samuel being woken that night was not a thing to be grumpy about. It's a thing to be amazed about because Samuel had been chosen to be someone that God would talk to so that Samuel could pass on that message to other people. And sometimes we have to listen to be able to hear those things. I think about the fact that it was night time. It was probably not a lot happening in the temple at night. And so it was quiet. And so Samuel could hear God's voice. I wonder what kind of things we need to listen to and hear today. Perhaps we need to listen to our teachers, the people that teach us. 
Perhaps we need to hear what a friend is saying to us because maybe they need a friendly ear, someone to talk to. Perhaps there's something that you need to listen to that's going on in your head at the moment. Sometimes I'm really good. If I have a quiet moment, I can be really good for a few minutes and then I think, oh, I need to do that for tea tonight, don't I? And oh my goodness, I need to put that on the shopping list and I haven't done that yet. So many different things. I can get distracted really easily. So sometimes we just need to be quiet and listen. Some of us find that really easy to do. Some of us find it really difficult to do. But we have to find our own way of being able to listen and being able to still ourselves and quiet ourselves. Because someone around you may need you today and may need you to listen today. So we're going to listen for a moment now. Maybe you want to listen to the sounds around the school. What can you hear? Or maybe there's something going on in your brain that you think, I just need to write that down somewhere and do that. But let's just spend a moment being a little bit still and quiet and just listening. I wonder what did you hear? It's really quiet round by the church today. I can hear some birds in the background. I can hear some traffic in the background. But actually, I can't hear very much at the moment. And amazingly, I didn't have a voice in my head saying, you need to go and get this for tea. So I wonder what we need to listen to today. Well, I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want to join in at the end and say amen after me. Loving God, we thank you that you use children as important people in the Bible. We thank you that you help us to speak and use our voice as well, where that needs to be heard. Help us to stand up and look after one another. Where there's something that's really important to us, to share that with somebody else. But where we need to, help us to be quiet and to listen, maybe to what we're being taught today maybe to a friend who needs to tell us something. So help us to listen, but help us also to speak when we need to have our voice heard. And we pray all this and we say, Amen. I really miss the voice of hearing all of your voices when I come into school. I really miss your questions and your thoughts because I have a lot to learn from you. And I know you might learn some things from me, but I also learn from you as well. So I'll say it for the millionth time, is I really miss seeing you all and hearing your voices. But whatever you are doing at school today, maybe you need to think about, do I need to speak now? Do I need to listen? And what do I hear when I listen? Oh, we can think about the amazing story of Samuel. Take care and have a lovely rest of the week, next to the infants. And I will probably be back in a couple more weeks with another assembly. Take care. Bye.